I'm live. I know it's late, but I just thought I'd read before bed a little bit more out of Winged Pharaoh. It's a far memory uh, book by Joan Grant. I shall write the details on the upload. Uh, this place in the ancient Egypt, uh, the time before the big flood, before the Babylonians. Um, it was a time when they knew the code, the code of ethics. I am now on chapter two. Anubis. When I was very little and walking was still a new adventure, Ma Mata took Nea and me with her to the temple. Nea held my hand going up the steps. Everything was very big and it was cold after the hot sunshine in the courtyard. In one of the rooms there was an enormous wooden animal, like a hunting dog, painted black. I wanted to touch it, but Nea said I mustn't, because it was the statue of God, of a god, and it was called Anubis. And suddenly I felt much colder than two, much older than two, and as wise as Maata, my nurse. And I thought I knew all about Anubis, but I couldn't find words to explain to Nea. When we got home, I told mother about it, and she gave me a little statue of Anubis. Just the same, only child size, with a little painted wooden house for it to live in. And I kept it beside my bed, so that I could see it the first thing in the morning when I woke up. Mother said Anubis was the bringer of dreams to children. Sometimes I dreamt of being grown up and doing lots of very important things. I couldn't quite remember them, but in the morning it seemed very unfamiliar to be only two. Nea didn't have to go to bed until long after me, because he was five. Quite often, before I went to sleep, he used to come and tell me stories. I had a very specially favourite story about a lion and a wildcat and a hare. The, they, the hare lived with his mother in the reeds. He could run much faster than all his brothers and sisters, and though his mother warned him not to go too far from home. He didn't listen, for he thought he could run away from any danger, however sudden. He used to creep out at night and look up at the moon, where he could see the father of all the hares, and he used to tell him all about the clever things he had done. One day, when he was busy thinking about himself, a huge wildcat sprang upon him, and she picked him up, in her mouth and took him home to her cubs for their breakfast. But the cubs had plenty of breakfast, so the wild cat put him down at the entrance to her cave and told him that if he moved, she would kill him at once. The poor hare was so frightened he kept quite still. Then he looked up at the god of the hares, hares and he said, Please, please look down out of the moon and help me. I made such a mistake about being clever. I'll always listen to people who know more than I do. If only you'll save me from this wild cat. The wild cat listened to what he was saying and she licked her whiskers and laughed to think that any hare, even if he lived in the moon, could attack a wild cat. Suddenly in the shadows outside the cave there was a great roaring and an enormous lion sprang upon the wild cat and ate her right up. The little hare saw that his prayer had been answered and he wasn't at all frightened of the lion because he knew that the answer to a prayer is always good, whatever shape it comes in. So he went up to the lion and thanked him. The lion lay down so that the hare could climb on his back and he nestled in the lion's mare while he rode back home to his mother. When the little hare grew up, he told this story over and over again, and he always finished up saying, Look to the moon and you will see the wisest of us all. <laughs> so chapter three is entitled Dream Country, and I shall read that tomorrow.